good morning to all of you uh, in this session i'll be talking about satellite remote sensing technology and its application broadly i will uh, discuss the how the the satellite technology evolved in our country over the time and how this particular technology is being used in the different applications of societal benefit areas if you see the vision of in our indian space program it is basically harnessing the space technology for societal benefit uh, all this uh, work done in space research organization we have one vision that ultimately this technology has to solve the problems of man and society that is uh, why uh, our uh, the pope, uh, our the father of uh, remote sensing program dr vikram sarabhai said we must be second to none in the application of advanced technology to real problems of man and society uh, the actually idea of the space technology started when this in 1957 the first satellite was launched and uh, the the people visualized that uh, there is a huge benefit when there is a orbiting platform uh, above the earth from there we can do remote sensing we can do communication and we, we can do many other applications so there the space technology the space program uh, started uh, being developed in india and uh, it was basically aimed to solve the challenges of our country if you see our country or india it is a big country of the 3.27 million km square if you see across the uh, globe it's a, uh, in a remote sensing image you will find it is very green full of diversity it contains 7% of the world diversity it has a host of ecosystem it has a glaciers of 8 8500 km square big coastline 7516 km we have uh, a lot of wetlands 10.6 million hectare if you add up the what you call uh, the rivers also into it then the area comes around 16 million hectares the forest cover is plenty but at the same time being a very uh, biodiverse country we have a good amount of population also around 1.32 billion when you have a big population to support over a limited the space of the land obviously the problems and challenges do will occur and the major challenges are declining in water per capita water goes on will continue to decline as our population increases because water is limited there are signs of land degradation there are indication of reduced forest cover and biodiversity in few places since a lot of uh, human pressure uh, anthropogenic pressures are there it results into climate change and there are reports that the glaciers some of the glaciers are retreating the climate change resulting into disasters and extreme weather these are some of the environmental challenges also apart from uh, the many good thing in our country to address these environmental challenges we require to first measure them observe them and see them where they are happening at what rate they are happening if you can observe them obviously we can find the solution for them we can uh, bring out the policies we can bring out the management uh, structure to reduce it or to solve it to some extent and that's how our government is doing but for that we require to know where they are. i mean what are those challenges and where are they are existing looking at this kind of vision in 1969 itself when the satellite technology was emerging and uh, our scientists visualized that uh, to solve the human societies uh, such kind of challenges we have to have a what you call uh, the space uh, missions and uh, uh, satellites and associated programs Uh, i remember when i can I mean, uh, i'm just showing when later written by dr vikram sarabhai to then prime minister of india um, mrs indira gandhi and uh, in the 1969 only he presented with his team of scientists professor p r pichalti professor k r ramanathan and he himself the importance of satellite technology which country 
is needed to have. You see, you, you can think of the kind of vision our scientists had. In 1969, still operational remote sensing systems were not there. They came in 1972 by the launch of Landsat satellite. But then these things were visualized and properly uh, told to the policymakers and later on, the program took place. And now, after 50 years of this, you can find that uh, many things have changed, and you, you can see that how technology has uh, really benefited our country. We have a uh, lot of information on natural resources, which is being used by government in devising various policies of conservation and management. Before I go to some uh, details of the technological and application area, just for sake of you, you all being teachers, uh, teaching the student, I'll go to very basics of uh, this technology called remote sensing. What is remote sensing? It is science of recording, observing object or event at far away places. It is science of where? In science, we ask what, how? But here, in this particular science, we ask, where? So it actually refers to technology of acquiring information about Earth's environment using sensors on board airborne or space borne platforms. So this is the basic definition of remote sensing, in, in which what uh, the traditionally happens in the passive remote sensing, the light comes from the sun, it gets reflected from different bodies of the Earth, maybe forest, water, grass, or built up areas. And when it gets reflected on the top of it, we have satellite orbiting our Earth. They record this light in different wavelengths and provide us the imageries of the region. And these imageries are helpful in reducing the information of that place. So if you talk about dimension of space technology, as far as remote sensing is concerned, you'll feel, I mean, you'll find that involves different facets. It's multidisciplinary. One has to be good and development of sensors. So these sensors are developed at uh, the Space Application Center Ahmedabad. And then it, the sensors have to put into satellite, which is developed at uh, URSC Bangalore. And then the satellites are launched uh, from Sri Harikota. And uh, you require a launch vehicle, a rocket. They are made at VSSC Trivandrum. And there, all the rocket technology exist now once satellites are put on the orbit one has to receive the data so there is a mcf master control facility where you have antenna system data reception you receive them then once you have received the digital data it has to be processed into the data product there comes the national remote sensing agency hyderabad they are responsible for processing and they for any scientist or even a common man can ask them for any kind of data from there. And once you have a data, when the scientists, or academicians, or the resource planner, they use this data for various applications by interpreting those imageries. And that could be a water resource, that could be agriculture, that could be forest. In this particular uh, training program, you are going to listen to the lectures from majority of the leaders of this field uh, from the director SAC, where the, the payloads are developed, from the URSC, director URSC, where satellites are developed, director VSSC, where launch vehicles are developed, director NRSC. So you are going to listen the broad gamut of all this technology uh, of this space. I'll be more discussing in this particular session about the remote sensing applications, which is a part of the total technology. Just before I go to the actual uh, details of the application, I would like to brief you that while doing remote sensing, we use some satellites in polar orbit. They, uh, they revolve around pole to pole and scan their surfaces, as well as there are some satellites, they are put into geostationary orbit. That is around 36,000 kilometer uh, distance away in equatorial plane. And the property of that orbit is that the satellite remain stationary with the Earth surface. So what you see, you continuously see in time domain, but polar orbits are generally 500 to 1,000 kilometer uh, distance, and there you scan the whole universe, I mean, the, the uh, world. 
So these are the broadly two orbits. Sometimes we also put that line in inclined orbit depending on certain applications. And the instrumentation what we uh, put into the set, uh, orbit or the satellite are called TV payload, multispectral radiometer, spectrometer, altimeter, synthetic aperture radar, and scatterometer. Why I'm saying all this term? Because maybe I'll using some words, uh, some terminology in my subsequent uh, slide. So I'm just telling you here so that you can know the nom nomenclature. TV payload used to be long back technology. In Bhaskara, it was there. But nowadays, people use multi-spectral cameras or scanners for taking these pictures in different wavelength condition. You can find here four kind of uh, circular aperture. They are of different filter by which you take uh, images. Many times, four uh, band or four uh, uh, this information in the uh, wavelength is uh, not sufficient. So one goes by 64 uh, or 258 or even 400, 1,000 channels uh, of uh, light of images you get. That is done through a spectrometer. And uh, then there are altimeter by which you can know the height of the object. There, there are active devices. Radar signals are um, sent on the ground after um, getting uh, reflected a signal. You measure the time of light. From there, you know the height of the object. There are radar systems, synthetic aperture radar. I mean, there are uh, a imaging system. They give images, but the power is this, that they can take images even in the clouds, which normally our optical camera don't take. There are scatterometers and other kind of uh, instrumentation, which has a power of uh, knowing the ocean and their wind condition, uh, uh, the wind velocity, uh, and everything in the ocean. So these are the broad uh, instrumentation, and this uh, generally this uh, satellites carry away uh, in different mission depending on the objectives. If you talk about any camera, if you see here a optical camera, symbolic I'm talking about, it has a linear array of detectors, and so it takes one line picture you can call it, and as it moves, a image is created on the ground. And what is there inside this camera? You have a four optics. Okay. Then you collect this light from the four optics, focus it through a slit, and then again pass to a uh, disperser or a filter. Here I'm showing grating, but it can be interference filter, where you select only few what you call a, a wavelength uh, region which you are interested, not all. I may be interested in blue uh, light, not in red light, or some other thing, depending on my application. And again, that particular selected light, filtered light, is, I mean, again, focused through a optics on a detector, and you det one detects the particular signal. This is the broad concept of any uh, optical instrumentation or spectrometer. Of course, they are design changes depending on the application, and they look like this. This I am showing it because it is a thermal infrared spectrometer, I mean, which uh, on which I generally use, and it was uh, shown on uh, it was flown on the Mars Orbiter mission for detecting the mineral composition and uh, its southern uh, properties. Idea of showing you this particular uh, optics design is that many of the concept of uh, optics where the focusing or di diffraction through grating, uh, all these things are told in a school curriculum. So the basic idea to uh, discuss this issue is that many of the basic concepts of optics and associated phenomena are, I mean, students do study in, in their school curriculum. Uh, and uh, you see that how this concept later on put into a device uh, made by its appropriate design, start taking good pictures and becomes a complex technology and uh, start giving images which are very useful to the society. So it is the linking of school knowledge to the top technology level. Things are very similar, only a complexity is added later on uh, of, of other dimension. But the basic concept remains same what is taught into the school level. When you do remote sensing, essentially we take an image of a region. For example, here I'm taking some uh, leaves here. God has only given ability to us to look in 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer. Generally, we call visible radiation. 
But remember, the radiations, what we get from sun or otherwise coming from universe, is beyond it. We are limited by seeing in a visible reason. Through instrumentation, through electronics, through devices, we can see any color for that matter. And that is the power of uh, remote sensing. There, what you do, you get uh, uh, this information in, in different uh, colors. Some colors are wavelength. We are even if we do not uh, see them, but electronics can see. And remember, I mean, they are very informative. They are very informative in sense they bring new knowledge. So what remote sensing does? It takes the uh, reflect. It, it detects the reflectance at different wavelengths of region and see its variation. And it has been found that the object has a characteristic reflectance and wavelength behavior. We call it spectral signature. And we know those signature on the from conducting the ground experiment. And whenever satellites take those pictures, we gather this spectral reflectance characteristic or called signature, and we are able to tell what kind of target it is. Let me tell you one thing. When you see an optical region, we call RGB, red, green, blue uh, image, you can see here the left panel, you have something, some stones or uh, uh, those things of different colors. Remember it uh, that they are seen in visible color also slightly differently, but many times if you look then into long wave infrared these are the wavelengths slightly higher wavelength than what we can see in the visible region instruments are able to do and I, i'll see them they generally lies in uh, some 8 to 10 micrometer where our visible light as i said is belong to 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer so if you see them from 8 to 10 or 8 to 12 micrometer they look much more distinct why they look distinct? Because the crystals of this uh, mineral, uh, they have a some sort of behavior called vibrational. I mean, uh, nature by which they vibrate differently, and in the process, they emit into a different color domain than the visible. So any instrument which which it works in this region is able to many a time distinguish orbit much better than what you do in visible and that is the power of uh, remote sensing and satellites here i would just like to show you that uh, how the power of uh, the wavelength same area we are seeing in different wavelength region we started from blue green red now we are going to some uh, near infrared region slightly beyond visible and then now we are going into much higher wavelength you see sometimes the object is seen sometimes it's not seen, or even whatever is seen, they change its color. So whatever color we see, it's only a natural one, what we call, but there are many pseudo colors, and this color has a power to distinguish the object differently, and the remote sensing scientists are expert in deciphering this knowledge, and that is why they use appropriate colors or wavelengths. You can see them. Sometimes you are able to see this particular target, and because it is in ocean, so some light is able to penetrate the ocean surface. Some light is not able to penetrate. That is why you start seeing sometime, and sometimes you are not able to see. And there, this uh, remote sensing scientists bring out the information from such interaction. One thing is very important: is scales and processes. When you devise an instrument, when we devise any uh, remote sensing experiment, or uh, think of uh, planning of any satellite. The, there are two things come. How fast I should take information? And what is spatial resolution? What area, how much detail I should see? Sometimes you have to see the weather. You have to see in a few minutes, maybe. Maybe a few hours. But there, I need not see 10 meter, 20 meter, or very detailed. What I require is one kilometer is good enough because I see the, what you call, uh, the cloud. Their resolution is not important, but how fast I see is important. Sometimes what happens? I want to see, like agriculture. I don't care. I, I don't want to see minute by minute. I don't want to see by day even. I can, it, it will do if I can observe a field in week. But then I need to see at field scale. So 10 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter I would require. And depending upon the kind of application, like disaster. 
there i want to see a landslide there i want to see very fast every hour every day at the same time uh, even a fine resolution because i have to see a boulder coming from a hill hill up there the both the stringent criteria comes you should have a good resolution and good uh, time coverage what you call temporary resolution and looking at the application the satellites are designed and they are put into different orbits cameras are designed if now i talk about our program of indian remote sensing program as i said it started in 1979 by the launch of bhaskara satellite it was the first satellite i consider 10 years was mostly a developmental phase then came the operational phase where we started making operational system which were giving good application and now we have reached into the advanced stage where we are conducting very good experiment and we are even doing many things which brings in new knowledge to us the whole program can be classified into developmental operation and advanced with the time we were launching few satellites two to four in a decade but now the launch of satellite has increased because infrastructure has increased requirement has increased so this is a broad evolution how it happened and if you talk about the uh, early phase as i said that the sarabhai and team started working in this field very early 1968 onwards by proposing the program to prime minister and the policy makers in planning commission and there it started and then when the planning commission and the management of the country asked can you detect first show the experiment and the experiment was given that there was a coconut root will disease and it was told that first have a uh, flight of aircraft and see whether we can detect them and it was the first agriculture experiment it was the first remote sensing experiment done by professor p r pisarity in 1970 later on the uh, aircraft campaign increased in country because before satellite to be launched it was decided that there should be more airborne uh, uh, experiment and uh, techniques had to be developed there the crop the yield assessment uh, was tried in various uh, part of the country anandpur patiala punjab and everything and it was found it is possible it is, it is doable and later on i mean this program resulted into a data reception of landsat satellite which was available by that time from america so this landsat was american satellite launch in 1972 that time india didn't have it but the work started and in 1979 india launched its first satellite called bhaskara so this was a time frame when india launched its first satellite bhaskara one in 1979 and there was a repeat mission in 81 with some small improvement the simple instruments were simpler at that time because at that time the technology the electronic the communication everything was similar and things were developing but later on india developed a irs system indian remote sensing satellite system in 1988 it was much advanced than what it was available in bhaskara and you can find it out by the picture itself bhaskara was the first satellite i said it has two instrumentation one we call microwave radio meter which images the temperature of the body of the earth surface and atmosphere also and second was the tv camera you can see the picture from tv pelo pictures you just see pictures taken in the green band and pictures taken into the near infrared region looks not that clear as compared to the pictures we are habitual of seeing in google and many other places but remember it was a time of 1979 even doing this thing it was a difficult and it was a big challenge for india to develop this kind of system i'll tell you how with time the same team evolved and now we have a much evolved and much better system these are some of the initial pictures of bhaskara satellite uh, that time it was supposed to be very great picture but if you compare pictures from nowadays obviously you will see that they are not that uh, detailed or they don't have that clarity but then bhaskara was very popular satellite lot of information started coming into uh, this newspaper even i was in those days school time and we were reading those things and it was a great pride for us 
that uh, satellites are being uh, launched. And uh, this is picture of uh, the Samir payload where we started seeing where is hot, where is cold, and how much is hot. It has that kind of uh, instrumentation. Then came a second decade, 1991 to 2000. By this decade, a lot of improvements in technology took place, and IRS system, IRS 1B, 1C, in fact, inset platform system and ocean color system started developing. They were much evolved system. They were better electronics, better optics, and we had a good understanding uh, of the subject by the time. And the images will tell you that how we evolve. So I will not go in details, but this camera used to look like this. We used to call list one, list two, list three. Linear imaging self scanning is a full form. It used to see in one line. And as the satellite moved with the velocity on the ground, the images used to be created. And they started giving this kind of picture. These are the pictures taken by list one or list two or list three or wide field cameras. They were designed for different purposes. Remember one thing, this red color is an artificial color. Wherever you are seeing red, assume it is green, because in this false color composite, the green cover is shown as red color because of uh, this uh, crops or vegetation has a very unique uh, characteristic in near infrared region, not seen through our eyes, but uh, scientists use that knowledge uh, uh, to uh, infer that particular vegetation. So what they give, they give red color to that in near infrared region, which is you can call colorless or I mean, there's no, I mean, I mean, there's nothing like color into it because it is not perceptible to eyes. But we have to see into color. We give red, red color to that near infrared region. That is why whenever it is high, the images look red, but actually they are cropland, which are green in a natural color. So whenever I'll be showing you the red color in false color composite, just think it is a green cover. These pictures were quite clear, clearer as compared to Bhaskara satellite, what I showed you, because of the better optics and better design. In fact, the people started knowing the field conditions and uh, what you call uh, the details in, in different fields of the village. It is a village and you start seeing those details. So later on, when, when we gathered some knowledge, and started gathering the knowledge on the agriculture. We start monitoring the agriculture. There was a need to monitor the ocean also. Ocean monitoring was required because in agriculture, anyway, there, is a, there was an existing system of patwaris. They do surveys. Uh, but the surveys were limited to this thing, and it was taking a lot of time. Satellite helped them. But in ocean, it is difficult to watch ocean through the ground surveys. So there was a special satellite made called uh, OCM, Ocean Color Monitor. I will not go in detail of the specification, but this eight band uh, color instrument, you can see one eight circular things. They are filters appropriately put uh, at different wavelength. Scientists know where to put them. And then if you put them and take a picture, you, you can see, you can see a messy outbreak of Nakti, Luka, algal bloom in Arabian Sea and such kind of patterns of chlorophyll, the algal bloom, you can see it was not possible otherwise. And this satellite information becomes very important, not important in sense, it started giving the chlorophyll information in our oceans. You can see here a uh, lot of changes in chlorophyll concentration. It has a power uh, of uh, measuring the, some, I mean, there was an instrument called MSMR, which by which you could measure the temperature of the ocean, by measuring temperature and chlorophyll, uh, there's a special product called potential fishing zone for cars were created. I mean, scientists started knowing that where are the potential fishing zone because fish has certain attribute of going to high chlorophyll region and associated temperature region. Then came the third decade, that is 2001 to 2010. This decade was a very happening decade because the systems are much improved. I call it the operational phase because before that, still we were learning, we were sort of uh, devising methods. But by this time in the 2001 to 2010 frame, things have quite improved and the operational systems were placed, automatic uh, 
softwares and detailed uh, knowledge on the subject came and many projects which uh, i mean for which our national resource mapping started coming up in the field of forest agriculture the ocean land degradation wetland snow and glaciers this was the era in which majority of information of our country either call it coast call it desert call it himalaya call it glacier call it meteorology call it anything we started making a reference line from this camera and this uh, this uh, uh, period also saw a development of inset 3a and kalpana satellite from uh, the inset platform when i say inset platform this is a geostationary platform at 36000 km from where you see the globe of earth and the satellite becomes stationary to the what you call uh, uh, this uh, earth so you constantly see the same surface so you can see observation in every half an hour by this particular development instrumentation uh, we started knowing the cloud motion vector how clouds are moving how winds are moving outgoing long wave radiation how much uh, earth is emitting the heat or we call long wave radiation where are the rain falls where how much is the water vapor in metropos uh, metropospheric region and that became the big boon to india meteorological department that suddenly improved the weather forecasting capability in the country you must be knowing compared to earlier days nowadays weather forecasts are relatively better more accurate and majority of this importance go to the inset system the satellite system which india devised in in this process and instead of having some uh, uh, observatories of india uh, imd located some location one started seeing continuous shifts continuous variation in majority of this meteorological field and most important was the cyclone prediction now you know whenever cyclone comes before cyclone getting form we are able to know even 2 3 days before uh, it is going to form and we are tracking this before it hits it so those uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the the possibility of uh, the, the the disaster is uh, is reduced or mitigated and uh, four warnings are given to the coastline and fish, uh, fishermen and uh, you see it is saving lot of life and the money and this system made a very important contribution in this uh, societal benefit area this was such picture used to see from this particular camera this instrument this uh, satellite has a ccd camera is a specialized camera generally people didn't have in the inset platform and it was one of its kind during that time here you can see all red color things basically our radar again green i would say because it is false color composite taken from the inset platform that is 36000 km so not only the weather we started knowing even the vegetation changes from the polar orbit in uh, geostationary satellites one thing very important is that we when we study in school i um, mean we are taught about photosynthesis that carbon dioxide and water when they mix together uh, in a plant in the presence of sunlight you get c6 as 12 bo6 there is sugar and then there is release of oxygen what you call photosynthesis that is the primary method of how sun energy is uh, converted into the productivity the production there is no other way that you can produce any food is the only way to do that we call photosynthesis only plants can do we have seen this process is happening but uh, remember this that uh, uh, we have devised this uh, the method we have devised instrumentation on this satellite that by measuring the plants from the uh, satellite platform we are able to know how much carbon dioxide is being assimilated uh, or uh, by the plants in the globe or the larger region how much photosynthesis is taking place how much is the net primary productivity the right curve here you can see is that uh, the amount of net primary productivity annually and you can see that some region we have 1000 grams of carbon per meter per year we are able to assimilate so much of uh, carbon somewhere it is little like in desert it could be 300 to 400 
and somewhere it is much higher, even more than 1500, 1600 grams of carbon. So we started knowing at moment uh, this satellite has the potential to know the photosynthesis from the space. So simple uh, concept taught at school level now is being implemented a satellite to know those processes from distance. India developed a resource at one satellite platform where they use three camera, list four, list three, and AVIS uh, at different resolution we call three tier system to monitor the dynamics of vegetation and crop because knowing the crop uh, it was the major importance in country. And you can see in the ground, there is a Punjab region. Redness again is green region. So in January, it is red or sickle. It is green in a natural sense. And as the time progresses, April comes, the it is, crop is senescing and you don't have crop in May time frame. Such monitoring started happening from this system. And the system I said has a three tier system. It has a very resolved camera called this for Whenever you want to see a field, you can see a field and you can see which crop is grown there. If you want to see a region, you can see use this three camera. Their field won't be uh, seen in detail, but you can see the larger uh, region and there is a wide field uh, uh, camera which could see the nation or the big region. Of course, field won't be seen so depending upon uh, the, the kind of uh, work you want to do. And one can detect the wheat, gram, fallows automatically from this. So uh, whatever surveys are done by patwaris in villages, that become now easier. And there is an operation agency in Ministry of Agriculture in Delhi. They, they do re operationally this work. They monitor a crop that whether this year this produce is going to be more or less. That's very important application. One of the important applications of satellite in our country. Glaciers are the another important thing that you have to monitor them how they are changing, where the, what are the accumulation areas, what are the ablation area, what are, where are these uh, moraine dam lakes are getting from, where are the snout, and that becomes much more important in terms of water resources, knowing the water resource, as well as in terms of climate changes, there are indications that glaciers are melting. How do we know them? Are they melting or not? Satellite is the only means by which you can know so if you see the temporal images from 10 year, 20 year back taken, and now if you have that taken, by knowing their MDL, that is Moran Dam Lake, and the sizes, you can know them. Well, it seems that they're melting or they're not melting. And that is how ISRO has created a big database of how many are melting and why they are melting. And it has been found that warming uh, of the atmosphere through climate change is uh, melting many of these lakes, not all, but many of them. This is a very good application. There was an instrumentation called CartoSat. Where much resolved uh, telescope was put into the satellite. From there, one can see even the field. Now, just uh, for a comparison drawn here, if you see the Bhaskara satellite in the left-hand side, when we started in 1979, and the current technology ours, when we are having the CartoSat, you can see the details by which same team which made cameras as uh, Bhaskara one, same laboratory, space replication center. Now with advancement in technology, we are capable enough to see within a meter resolution, any object, any part of the globe and various applications have been tried. So at moment, we have a multi-resolution capability established. We can see even a tree level, we can see a farm, we can see any large regional pictures of a area and the forest and crop. We can see the country as such, as a whole. So, depending on the resolution, depend application requirement and the policy and uh, those requirements, we can take pictures. We can take pictures of the last 30 years. We can analyze any land cover, land use changes over the country. There's what the capability established over the time using satellite technology, and it exists today. Then there were much more uh, improvement, as I said, Many times, few bands, uh, selected bands, uh, are limited in their applications. So we made cameras we call spectrometer. There, instead of seeing in few four, five bands, we start seeing in 64, or 100, or nowadays 400 uh, channels we are able to see. If you see them in more wavelength channels, you can resolve. You can know the not only the target size or structure. You can even know the characteristic, the properties, the chemical composition of those targets. 
And one of this uh, particular uh, uh, such uh, spectrometer was put into Chandrayaan-1 mission because this happened in the same time period, 2008. And you all know Chandrayaan-1 mission was India's first mission to moon. It opened many new areas of experiment. In fact, uh, whole country felt very proud and it was very much appreciated by the student community to academicians to worldwide. And uh, I hope you are, uh, know that before that, people used to think before Chandrayaan that uh, moon is a very dry surface. There's no water there. But after Chandrayaan mission, uh, globally it's accepted that in the polar regions of moon, there are signatures of water. This particular, you can see the blue color shown there. This was a discovery of water made by Chandrayaan 1. Now in Chandrayaan 2, we are able to see similar features. And uh, since Chandrayaan 2 was further improved in some region and the wavelengths were further uh, designed in a better fashion, and this discovery is reconfirmed. And now we have an ambiguous, on an unambiguous detection of water. What we said in Chandrayaan 1, it has been reconfirmed in Chandrayaan 2. And that Chandrayaan 1 and Chandrayaan 2 data provided globally a new insight about the moon. The fourth decade, the last decade, really was an advanced decade for us. A lot many new and advanced systems came, and uh, our capability of knowing our Earth and associated environment has improved a lot. There were continuity missions of what we did earlier. They are still continuing. At the same time, we had another and new information. I would say the very new information came from developing a radar system. Many times our optical data sets are limited by cloud. Okay, So in the monsoon season, we are not able to see our features. So in those period, our imaging or our observation capability was limited. But in 2012, a reset one synthetic aperture radar was developed. By that, now we are able to take, and now another reset one a is also launched current recently. So this kind of observation gave us all weather capability of observing the Earth's surface. It was a very new thing in this particular decade it happened. We also had a solar Altica mission. As I said, Altica is an altimeter by which we can measure the heights of the uh, object. This mission gave us uh, to know the water level, changes over the different rivers. Now we, we can know, but today only, if you want to know, you can know more than 100 locations of uh, wetlands like reservoir or river, what is the water level that came, that is possible because of this kind of mission. And this particular decade was also a very happening decade because of we had a very important mission called Mars Orbiter Mission in 2013. I, I am fortunate to be one of the a principal investigator in this particular mission dealing the thermal infrared spectrometer camera which took the mineral observation over there and it was really exciting to see in the first attempt only india could revolve around the mars and continuously revolving till today and taking good information pictures of mars it also had a very good uh, many other missions uh, including the inset uh, founder where now we got the capability of knowing the vertical distribution of weather. Earlier, we used to know the weather, but not height-wide distribution. This inset platform gave us the capability to see at what height, what is the temperature and humidity. These are the very much required parameters for the weather forecast. So this, was, this is one mission, Megatropic, which helped to know us the weather. Uh, reset I was talking about, it was a radar which helped us to knowing the 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 uh, take images even in the uh, cloud uh, was there, or we can even take images in night because it has its own source of radiation. It has a radar, so you don't depend on uh, sun. You send the signal and get back the same. So it started telling us not only the our land feature, even the polar regions, ice calving, ice shelf, those uh, wherever there are deformation and changes. Regularly, people are monitoring from this. So it gives another dimension of measurement. I was talking about insert 3D imaging. 3D imaging, as I mean, is that you start knowing the vertical distribution of the weather, particularly temperature and humidity. Because many of the meteorological phenomena, they happen at different uh, level of atmosphere. These were the, instrument, these were the filters uh, used by this uh, insert 3D. 
DMIR, sphere visible, water vapor, thermal infrared. These are the name given to different wavelengths of the region, and that's how the specialist knows them with this name. And every filter has certain advantage. Like if you see in a visible region, you are able to see the ground surface more clearly. But suppose you, you see in a water vapor channel, you see from the left side, you are not able to see anything on the ground, but you are seeing something on the top of atmosphere. So you start seeing atmosphere. If you see thermal infrared region, sometimes you partly see ground and you partly see atmosphere. So looking at different filters, we are able to scan different atmosphere and what we call in our uh, technical language, we start doing sounding of the atmosphere, I mean, the meteorological system or atmospheric processes. As I said, cyclone was the, I would say, one of the most important application in my uh, consideration is cyclone detection and prediction and track prediction and which helps really society. If you think of uh, era when, I mean, before 90 or 1982, when the first inset was launched, I mean, the situation and now, whenever this formation takes place, we are a priori able to know it and uh, we are able to warn the people. Scat set is a scatterometer I was talking about in another instrument, which deals uh, with the scattering of uh, energy in microwave regime. Uh, and uh, now the current satellite, Carto set 2S, just you see the resolution, the sub-meter, centimeter scale resolution, we have a capability to detect. So journey start in 1979 with a very hazy kind of picture, but that scientific principle now when properly designed with the availability of proper uh, electronics and optics uh, available now can do wonders and we have a capability to watch any object of any scale, any time, any place in the world. There's one example where Cartosat satellites are not only giving details, they are also giving the height of the building because they have a something called stereoscopic property. Like they see same object in two different angles by which they are able to derive the height. Mars orbital mission, as I was saying, is about the biggest, uh, I would say, game, I mean, it was a game changer in space mission. A uh, lot of appreciation came because launching a satellite so much away to Mars in first attempt, it was a really te technological challenge. And India could do in first attempt, although many other countries are able to, in, could not do in first attempt itself. And the kind of pictures we now get uh, daily, at different, uh, giving different properties of the Mars and the, the weather patterns, regularly we get, and these observations are freely available to human community, I mean, uh, our academic community of any person that way, and they're open data sets for everybody. And you can, I'm just showing you one small picture of uh, uh, Mars taken by the Mars color camera, put in, there was five cameras, I mean, instrument, one was Mars color camera, which takes all this picture, is all natural color. This here red is a natural color, it is not false color. Mars is a red planet. So you can see, the details from the mass color camera, and this is a sort of paleo channel. By seeing the pebbles and structures there, you can note it down. There are signals of past flowing water on the Mars. You can see see them. I mean, it's said that Mars has a long back, a lot of water flowing there, and they are, the, but at currently it is not there because of uh, its pressure has reduced. You can't see liquid on the top of surface required such an environment, it has, environment has become thin nowadays, everything got evaporated, but surface signals suggest you that it had been long back, a uh, lot of signals of water flowing there. In fact, people have still a lot of interest, and they think that there could be, within the surface, some processes still going on, and that's where the investigation is continuously going on. Future direction, we have many plans, country has many plans to go, we have a GI set mission, which is a very, I would say, big telescope put into 36,000 kilometers. So it will able to give us a, every 15 minutes interval detailed information as is required for any disaster. As I said, you require, meteorology requires close resolution and fast, but then disaster poses a problem that we require high resolution and fast. So we have to put into geostation satellite, but at the same time, we have to put a 
big uh, telescope. So GISAT is that particular satellite going to be launched soon and it will able to detect things at 30 to 40 kilometer resolution, but very fast every half an hour or so. We are going to have further uh, radar satellites. We are going to have improved ocean set satellites. We are going to have another mission called NISAR mission, which have which will have a capability to observe the very detailed deformation changes, either due to earthquake or uh, landslide and everything. We are going to have a Trishna mission, which is a thermal mission, which is able to tell us the not only the crop uh, distribution, even the stresses and functioning of crop, whether crop has a water stress or not. It has a capability of knowing evapotranspiration, how much water is emanating from the crop. So, so these are some future challenges which is there in pipeline, apart from many other planetary observations like ISRO is planning to go to Venus, want to do another uh, Mars mission, when ISRO has a plan to have a Chandrayaan-3 mission. So these are the future directions of going it. I'm not going to detail what this GI set is, but just think it is a it is a uh, it has a very sophisticated uh, telescope and camera system but put at geostationary orbit it will carry various land ocean and atmospheric uh, application detect many parameters uh, special coverage would be whole india we had a similar observation some mimicking to see this from a instrument called ghrc instrument and we have already tested the capability so this is one picture from GSRC from Geocentric platform. And you can see that uh, if you have such good camera, uh, you can see a small video here that GSRC was able to pick up that uh, a rocket launch from the Harry Potter from 36,000 kilometers. So this camera has a capability to even see the smaller feature in a time domain manner. OK, so I'll summarize uh, this particular uh, uh, presentation or my talk by developing so much of uh, sophisticated into instrumentation over the year, learning from our failures, making newer and newer instrumentation. We now assess the vegetation, capability have assessed the vegetation, minerals, water quality, air pollution, snow and glaciers, colour reefs, how they are bleaching or not, atmospheres, various prop properties. And we carry, we can carry any planetary science experiment in that way in nutshell. And uh, to resolve, to support our uh, challenges of uh, Indian, uh, what you call a system, uh, and to the planners and policymakers, we are working in the field of sustainable agriculture, inland marine fisheries, and horticulture, providing solutions to them, providing information to them. We are uh, we are working from satellites to help into forest status, biodiversity, coastal zone management, environmental impact assessment studies. We are monitoring our various disasters, and uh, we are working towards uh, monitoring and gathering the information on surface water resources, groundwater prospecting, snow and glaciers, weather forecasting, ocean state forecasting, and these things are being done by using satellite as well as the mathematical model. Satellites are also being used in operational sense from various ministry for urban planning, rural road infrastructure development, global change indicators, regional climate model, and impact assessment. So the satellites, when you develop the, uh, the, the technology, it has many applications in societal benefit areas. And in the last, I will conclude and I give a summary to you. The remote sensing technology is an important tool for resource management and national development. And that's why we have a special uh, uh, development took place in country, and many countries in the world do not have this capability, what we have. It, provide, it provides the information on current state of vegetation, water, atmospheric condition, and help us in understanding the relationship. Regularly used by Ministry of India to monitor flood, water security issues, Readiness to combat extreme disaster events and effect of climate change on ecosystem. Ministries are using this information uh, generated by scientists for their policy. And um, there's a need and there's a work going on in direction for near real-time monitoring 
and forecast and web based data dissemination so that everything is available on a common platform to all the citizens of our country. Thank you very much.